I made a choice to play jazz for many different reasons, but one of the main reasons being that A few weeks ago I got this tweet from Richard. Because I'm a polite guy and I wanted to be courteous to the person who sent me the original tweet, I asked them if they would let me uh, embed the tweet as part of uh, this vlog episode. They said no. Um, I offered to do it with their name blurred out. They still said no. So um, sadly uh, you aren't going to see the full context of the tweet uh, and the message which was said, but I still stand by everything else that's in the edit and I still think that um, hopefully if this person is watching they will understand. My intention was certainly never to embarrass the person or to cause any offence. It is merely to try and help because it's something I get asked a lot, it's something I see a great deal, uh, is people not kind of getting quite what should be going on with social media. So that said, let's carry on with the rest of the vlog. It's hard to make it on YouTube. I certainly could not survive on just what I earn on YouTube but I've never intended to. You see, I started on YouTube way back in 2006. I think it was, it was something a long, long time ago, certainly before Google bought it. And for me, it was just a way of distributing videos. It was a way of filming my gigs and getting my videos out there. And that's a little bit like this person's trying to do, but it doesn't really create a lot of interest. Now, I did pick up a few subscribers. I think I, when I started, kind of like the turn of 2015, I was up to like 460 odd subscribers, which was a bit weird because my Facebook account was about 4,000. Uh, Twitter was about nine and a half thousand, maybe eight and a half thousand, something like that. And, I, but I wasn't focusing on YouTube. I was using YouTube as a way of linking videos, say from, uh, Cambridge saxophone or I was linking to them to Facebook and I was primarily focusing on those channels it was only when I started when I did the Kickstarter for my Jazz Vespers album and I thought do you know what would be a really good idea to keep people in the loop about what's going on how I'm spending their money basically because I thought you know people were a, being very generous and funding this album it would be nice for them to see what was happening on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of follow the journey as it happened. I also know that blogging and updating your website is very very important you need to be able to keep regular posts going to keep people interested to keep it moving up the Google algorithm but I'm not a great writer. I don't really like writing that what much. I kind of start looking at it and I think, oh, that doesn't make sense. Oh, I don't like, don't enjoy that. And sometimes my writing can come a, become a little disjointed, a bit like my speech right now. But I realized that telling stories is something I'm quite good at and I always have been. You see, I remember being about seven, maybe six with a tape recorder and the tape went in, you hit the two buttons and I used to record everything. I can vividly remember being sat on the doorstep of our house and my grandma and Auntie Anne coming around and recording my thoughts on them coming in, almost like a radio broadcaster would do. I always had this desire to share my stories and we all have as humans really we've all got that desire deep inside of us to tell stories that's what i'm on youtube to do i want to share my stories i want to share my perspective but most of all i want to inspire you guys to share your perspective that's why i get so off when people are commenting all the time or putting their two pennies within and I look at what they've done and they've done nothing. They have no content whatsoever. But really don't start offering your advice until you've stuck it on YouTube yourself. Before you start adding your comments to other people's channels, make your own channel, make your own content. Go through that workflow that you have to do, that ownership of the work to be able to do it. Now going back to that original tweet, this person was creating their own content, but sadly wasn't really getting the views over and I think they've only kind of reached 60 subscribers since. You've got to create interesting content that people want to watch and I always find that a really difficult dividing line because I'm not a populist. I'm not interested in creating content for the sake of the masses as it were. If I was I wouldn't be playing jazz music. You know I made a choice to play jazz for many different reasons but one of the main reasons being that making this art 
was supposed to be an expression of who I am. And I can't make an expression of who I am if I sell out just to make it popular. Now, some people make art that is very, very popular that is an expression of who they are. And that's amazing. And I'm really, really thrilled. And I really enjoy watching it. You're only going to reach 1K subscribers. You're only going to reach the amount of playtime if you're creating content that people are interested in. Now, the beauty of YouTube is you don't have to make that many people interested in your content. A thousand people versus the billions of people who are using YouTube every day is not that hard, but there's a lot of people making a lot of noise on YouTube and there's only one way you can stand out and that is to be yourself. Now, my experience is if you create interesting enough content, people will want to watch it. I very much, like so many other people, have made this kind of like an open lab. I have created lots of content. Some of it people have really wanted to watch, like we said in the uh, Santa Place Sax video. Some of it hasn't got that many views. My favourite two videos are probably the story about the soprano saxophone and then the Ernest Topping story, which a year on today since I first filmed it, um, I want that to, I wish that had gone viral. That should have a quarter of a million views in my mind because it's a better story, it's a better made video. When you stick your art into the public forum, you don't get to decide how it is um, viewed, felt, critiqued, whatever. You've just got to stick it out there, know inside that you've done your best and that is an accurate uh, depiction of what you want and then just leave it be. It is of course worth remembering that YouTube themselves have to be very careful which videos have adverts next to them. They can't run the risk of what's been happening because the mainstream media and the newspapers particularly are always gonna be on their case. If there is a slight um, chance that YouTube have got something wrong, you can guarantee the mainstream press will jump on them like a ton of bricks because companies are shifting their ad revenues from newspapers and established publications over to YouTube and other new media. And if they get it wrong, the new media, you can guarantee the old media will be jumping on them because it's in their interest to do that. So I've no idea how this whole vlog is going to come out. Well, basically, I just had a text from Saffron Hall, which is where I look after Jazz, who just sent me and said, do you want to come down and uh, see Winton? Because he's down for the afternoon. down here it's Narnia-esque but some people cannot drive in snow we're currently doing 15 miles an hour you could easily do 25 30 down here and not have a problem so remember people if you are driving in the snow you should, oh there's potholes there um, <laughs> you should drive in a high gear um, that limits wheel spin oh if you want to have some fun take the traction control off and off you go <laughs> So Winton's in the concert hall. I just can't bring myself at those times to get the camera out and start videoing it, I'm afraid. It's just one of those things for me. It was really good to catch up with him and chat to him. He's hopefully gonna come to my uh, Saturday morning class tomorrow, my jazz band class. The problem is, it is really, really snowing and we are like, we might have to cancel the thing tomorrow. How disappointing is that for the students that they could have had a masterclass of Winton Marsalis. Uh, in that jazz thing and the weather has closed in. It really is snowing quite badly now. I've uh, basically um, decided the gig's gonna finish a bit earlier tonight so everyone can get away, but it really is coming down thickest I've seen it all week. It's really, really bad. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's the end of today's vlog. Hopefully Winton is gonna be in tomorrow to teach my class, as I said, just depending on the weather. I hope this vlog somehow tells a decent story today. I've no idea where it's gonna go. Uh, maybe I was a bit hard initially. If you've watched this far, maybe you think I was. Maybe you've learned something from it. Maybe, hopefully, you've been inspired by it and that's the name of the game. That's what I would hope would happen with anything I'm saying or doing on uh, this vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out my last vlog, which is here. This is what I was up to this time last year when I was in France and visiting Dinant, the birthplace of Adolf Sachs. And please hit that subscribe button if you don't do it already. I'll maybe see you tomorrow with Winton teaching my students.